and we're doing the New Age of Aquarius Part 2. And if you missed Part 1, have I got a deal for you. You know, we, uh, we, we'll sell it. Incidentally, for those of you who are interested in just uh, like short tape work, we have a videotape, a studio work that I did that I think you might find interesting on the degrading of women in the Bible. And that's all that's on there. It's just a half hour tape. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in that, let me know. Uh, when we look at the New Age of Aquarius, you, you can't just look at Aquarius without looking at the entire picture, the universe as it is, you know, where it's come from. We, we went through that last week. But the interesting thing is especially this time of year, because this time of year, the sun, God's only begotten sun, the light of the world, okay, on December the 21st, enters a constellation in the universe called Crooks, which is the cross. So the, the, the sun actually is crucified on December the 21st, which is the shortest day of the year. And of course, as you know, in the Bible, when Jesus is crucified, there's an eclipse because he is the sun god. Now, on December the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, the sun is in the tomb of the earth. It's, in, it's it's entombed in the bowels of the earth. These are the dark times, and it stays there. And on December the 25th, which is Christmas Day, the sun, God's only begotten sun, the light of the world, is born. Okay? And the sun then travels through the trajectory of the earth until finally it impacts in the burnt offering on Aries, which is the Lamb of God, which takes away the cold of the winter. Then in the northern hemisphere, the sun sits at the eastern sky, or the right side, and summer comes. That's basically the entire thing. And that's Jesus being crucified in the tomb three days and three nights, born on December the 25th, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, sitting at the right hand of the Father. It all happens in the sky. And it's happened in the sky for millions and millions and millions of years, you know. So it's a very important thing. What happens is, is in, the, um, in the zodiac or astrological sciences of, of Scripture, the sun begins its journey in September at Virgo. It's born of a virgin. And then it culminates in August with uh, Leo. It becomes the Christ, the King of Kings, the Lion of Judah. See, and that's the, way, that's the way it works. So when you see this, and then you see Jesus calling himself the Bridegroom, which is the Son, and Amen, which is the name of the Sun God, that's very interesting. So this is, this is actually where all of this came from, and, and, and this is the important part. So you say, well, okay, so what does this mean? Well, what is important to you is that, make this the sun, okay? In the center of your abdomen here is a place called the solar plexus. It's the place of the sun. And what must happen is of a virgin consciousness, the sun must be crucified, born and crucified through the five wounds of, of, of meditation, sight, taste, touch, smell, hearing, the five senses crucified, sitting in the deep tomb of meditation, one is then reborn of a virgin to rise up to the lamb, which is the pineal gland of the brain, and then the energy goes to the right hemisphere of the brain, and summertime comes to your life. That's exactly what was supposed to be in, in the story that you read of Christ, because that's what happens in the universe. And the universe is what's called the macrocosm, M-A-C-R-O-C-O-S-M, something like that. And the interior, or you, is called the microcosm. As it is without, so it is within. Now, there's more, I'm leading up to this as far as Aquarius, because there's something very interesting which was displayed on television, and Albert checked it out on his computers, and uh, so we have this to announce today, which uh, I think is extremely interesting when you look at the origin of these stories and where these things came from. Of course, the nativities and virgin births and crucifixions are as old as time, gone down through the mythology of, of, of Hinduism and Buddhism and Christianity and so forth and so on. But this is the interesting thing. In the uh, sky is that constellation we talked about, Crooks, which is the cross. Okay. Very close to the constellation Crooks or the star Crooks is a star called. Let me see if I can. You got this spelled out, right, Albert? Uh, or, P, uh, here it is. P R A E S E P E. Okay. Now that is is very close. Now this is the interesting point. Okay. The only time of the year 
that the cross and this star can be seen together are five days before December the 25th and five days after December 25th. And the interesting point is that the cross is here and this precipice means the manger. Isn't that interesting? And the only time that you can see the cross and the manger together are the five days before December the 25th and the five days after December the 25th. Other than that, you can never see them together. And I think that is really a fascinating thing. And of course, at the same time, and as Albert has showed on his computer, there are two other constellations which are very close by. One is Leo, which is the king, the Lion of Judah, and the other one right over here is Virgo the Virgin. And all of these are together during the Christmas period, and that's why a lot of you sometimes feel the way you do, or depression, but Virgin is apparent, Leo the King of Kings is apparent, the cross is apparent, and the manger is apparent five days before Christmas and five days after Christmas. So it's really, you know, I think when you begin to understand the impact and the importance of the universe and the stars and astrological sciences, you can't. What I'm saying to you is these things were there millions of years, since the beginning of time. The only time that you could see the cross and the manger was around December the 25th. So, it doesn't, you don't have to become a, a rocket scientist then to begin to realize where these things came from. What is the origin of this and the purpose of it. And the purpose is so that as you begin to understand that the universe does not stand alone, that you are part of the universe. And as the universe impacts on nature, it impacts on you. The universe cannot impact on the tides and the storms of the earth without impacting on the storms within, the microcosm. Okay? So these are the things that um, are interesting, and we begin to realize the reality of all of this. It's no longer something to write in a book. It's no longer something to write on a Christmas card. It is something that exists and is happening. And if you were to go and, I don't know, Albert probably could tell you the direction to look and to pinpoint it, you could see the cross and you can see the manger. And only for five days before Christmas and after Christmas. And then it disappears to come back and the story is done again. So the reality of, of where these legends and where these stories came from. Okay. So what are we looking at? We're okay. looking at, at this, uh, this chart that I gave you. And if you, if, you, if you take, like here, and this way, look at it like this, and you'll see very, right at the bottom of the page in the center, the water man, Aquarius. Okay? Do you see him? Do you see him with his pitcher of water? That's your age. That's the age that you live in now. That's what's happening now. That's why all the changes are occurring. Somebody open your Bible, a little blue Bible, to Luke 22, and tell me what page it's on, okay? So I can get everybody there. But I wanted to show you the prophecy of why all of the changes, why you're feeling the way you are, why you even sit here listening to me in the, in the strange thing. What is it? Page 858 or 859. Look at Luke chapter 22. Go to page 858, 859, whatever it is. Okay. Now, I want you to hold this. Do you have this in your right hand? You have your Bible in your left hand? Or if you're like me, you'll instantly put your Bible in your right hand and this in your left hand or whatever because, you know, you won't want to do things the way I say. <laughs> so just make sure you have the Bible in one hand and this chart in the other hand. Take a good look at that chart. That's your age. That's the age you're living in now. That's the age of spirit. That's the age of change. Do you see that there? Now take a look at Luke chapter 22, verse 10, and what does Jesus say? Behold, when you enter into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house, and he'll show you the large upper room. There's the, there is the, the, the prophecy of the age of Aquarius. Because what is happening now is you're leaving, you're leaving the age of Pisces and you're entering into Aquarius. And the fish of Pisces have broken free from the barrier reef of religion and its system. Do you see? Look, see where Aquarius, now just take your finger, and if you go right a little to the left of Aquarius and the man with the pitcher of water, you'll see that large Cetus, right above Cetus. Do you see the two fish? Yeah. 
One is swimming down, the other is swimming up, and notice they're in bondage. Do you see how they're tied together? But the fish are breaking free. The bondage of Pisces has been broken free because the fish are swimming to the cosmic Christ fisherman, Aquarius, and there is a new birth. That's what's happening. That's what's written in the stars. And I'll tell you something. You may not think you're a part of it, but you are because the stars, the constellations, have the power to act out their will, and they do. When, when this storm, we, we experienced this Northeaster a couple of weeks ago, what was it? The power of the planets exercised its power. And they said, oh, we've never seen a storm like it. That's nothing compared to what you're going to see. And there's nothing anybody can do about it, see? There's nothing anybody, you can't change it. You can't change the power of the planets. You can't change the power of the stars. You can't change the power of the universe because they'll have their way. But when you understand it and you begin to flow in harmony with it, then you become safe. See, if, if you look there and you see Aquarius, you see a big fish right below it. And that fish is called, that star is called Piscis Australis. I guess that's where the word, the, the, the country Australia came from. It's a constellation directly south of Aquarius. And you can see it on there in the chart. And what is happening is the caught fishes are returned to the sea. The renewed minds begin to spread the gospel of the stars. Judgment is poured out. The stone is cast back into the sea. The umbilical cord of Pisces is severed. And the fish are free to swim. But you know what? Many of the fish, and you are, I believe, counted among those fish who are swimming upward. And you can see that fish in that little chart there. But there are many fish who are swimming downward. Because they don't understand. It's, it's too frightening to them. Here's a man that calls me and says, oh, this is your father, the devil. If you believe Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. And I scream, yes, believe the man. Do what the man says. Have the courage to do what he says. And if you believe Jesus Christ and you're going to walk with his rowdy band, then you're going to walk past every church. And the only time you go into a church is like Jesus did to disrupt it. <laughs> it's the only time he ever showed up in those places. Because they used to say, huh. You can't heal on the Sabbath. So he'd say to the guys, what day is this? They say, it's the Sabbath. He said, let's go. <laughs> let's go to church. And he'd see a guy with a withered hand. He'd say, stick your hand up. Because he said, whatever they say, I can't do this. I will do because this is right. And so Piscus Australis, the umbilical cord is severed. Now look at the picture. See, look at the picture of Aquarius, the waterman. The fishes who broke from the barrier to swim. Do you see what the fish is doing? The fish is swimming now, swimming up that water back to Aquarius. Swimming back to Aquarius. Swimming back to the fishermen. I mean, I want to be, to be caught by the fishermen. And what are you? Who is, who is the ruler over all of this as we talked last week? Uranus. And you are the children of Uranus. And you know what's something that's interesting? And I, some of you are here for the first time. I haven't seen you before. But do you know, uh, in the Bible, in the Greek translation of the Bible, it says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is the word heaven as transcribed from the Greek. What were they saying? The kingdom of Uranus is at hand. And you're a part of it. But what is it for? What are we swimming for? We are swimming to the picture of Aquarius to sow division in the system in order to bring about eternity. I am not here. You see, the point is some people say, oh, you, maybe you shouldn't say this. Well, I say it anyhow. It doesn't make any difference anymore, see? Because I have to say what my job, and I am one who is to sow division in the system. I am not one to say, this is right, oh, we don't want to offend anybody. Yes, we do. Very important to offend them. Because unless you offend them, they'll never stand up and start saying, what the heck are we doing? What's wrong? Don't you think it was offensive when Saddam Hussein uh, decided to take over this country and, and all of a sudden all of these soldiers and their bombs came in raining down through his chimneys? It was very offensive to him. But somewhere you have to stop. Don't, don't you think you have to offend somebody when you turn your television on and you see all these little children, skin and bone skeletons walking around with flies crawling? Don't you think somebody has to be offended and say, this is your trash? Because you have separated people one from the other. 
Who, who, who made the boundaries? Who create, Who said that Somalia is no part of the United States? Who said the United States is no part of Bosnia or wherever it is? Who said that all of these places are different? They're not. It is one globe of people, of human beings, of living and breathing, eternity, life, and all is one. Who said that they're separated? It's not a Somali child dying over there. It's a child. It's not a Somalia mother and father who, who don't have any food for their children. It's people. It's human beings. It's compassion that flows in Jesus Christ that I pray they all may be one. And so what did he do? Did he come down here to get everybody to go to church? No, he didn't come down here to get everybody to go to church. He says, I come down and I bring in a sword. And I'm going to cut you away from your family. And I'm going to cut you away from your church. And I'm going to cut you away from your traditions. And I'm going to cut you away from your government. And I'm going to cut you away from everything that you held as important. And then you're going to find out what important really is. And you're going to raise yourself. And I will be you. And you will be me. And we will be one. And the world will be changed. And there will be no children dying and starving and suffering anymore. And that's the promise of Aquarius. In fact, the, 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 the weapons will be beaten and the plowshares and the line will lay down with the lamb and all of this stuff. But the new age is up to you. So, so many, I want to put it on the sign out there. I want, that's one of the things I want to get for 1993 is a new sign in front of a new age Christian village church because now I want to see you walk in the door. Not walking into the Christian. I'm saying, I want to see you walking into the New Age Christian Village Church and turn like in, and Richard Nixon used to do. When you turn around and go like that, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked that. I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> but you know what? The, let me show you something. You know, haven't you spent your whole life people saying, if you got a problem, ask Jesus. <laughs> Pray to Jesus, and Jesus is going to answer your question. And Jesus is going to help you, and Jesus is going to do that. Jesus is going to do that. Ask Jesus to do it. You don't have to do nothing, because you're nothing but a scuzzball. So you just ask Jesus what to do. What can you know? You don't know nothing. You can't read the Bible. can't do nothing. You ask Jesus. But what did he say? What did Jesus say? And I, I, want to, I want to show you what he said. Because you've been praying to him all your life. And in the first place in John 16, he said, don't ask me for anything. You know? But that's, that's whited out in the Bible. They don't read that. Did, did, did they ever read to you the part in the Bible where Jesus says, don't ask me for anything? It's in John 16, 20 something. Did they ever read, read to you the part in the Bible where Jesus said, hey, I'm not going to pray to the Father for you? It's in the Bible too, John 16. They never read that. To, did they ever read the part in the Bible to you where Jesus said, hey, do you know what? You think I'm a hot shot? You can do better than me. You should do better than me. Go in. I want you to go to the Methodist church across the street and just stand there. They're all coming out and say, I'm from the New Age church across the street and I just want to tell you... I can do better than Jesus. I can do better than Jesus. <laughs> but you know what? Hey, they'll get very upset, won't they? Yeah. A little bit. But do you know what the point is? He said you could, and he said you should. That's the important part. I'll do it first. <laughs> But this is the point that I wanted to show you about Jesus solving your problems for you. Go to page 847 in the Bible. Go to Luke. This is another scripture they never read you. Go to Luke chapter 12. And look what Jesus says when people are asking him to settle their problems for them. Luke chapter 12, verse 14. And what did Jesus say to the people when they wanted him to solve their problems? He said, man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Huh? He never claimed that. Jesus Christ said, hey, <laughs> hey, this is your job. You screwed it up. You unscrew it. Who made me? I'm just telling you how to unscrew it, but I'm not going to do it. Who made me judge and jury over you? Did you never saw that one, did you? No, because you've been praying to Jesus. And Jesus help you. <laughs> Even though Jesus said, no, don't pray to me. I'm not helping you. Help yourself. But you know what? That is the thing that people can't deal with. Help yourself. And everything that you need to help yourself is in here. 
including Jesus. Oh, Jesus. But the Aquarian Banquet Hall is open. See? The Banquet Hall is open. The doors are wide open now. This is the age of Aquarius. You can walk in if you want. But what do you have to do? You have to act cuckoo. You have to sit on the floor. And you have to go, oh, and all of that stuff that people think you're a lunatic, you're a fanatic, you're an occultist. You have to get into yourself. You have to lift yourself up to that holy pineal gland of Aries and have to let the energy go to the right hemisphere of the brain. Inside of yourself, you have to do this. And the age of Aquarius is here to lift you up. But either you follow that enlightenment or you don't. There's nobody going to come down and say you've got to do it. Who has ever called? That's what people get ticked off about. When they leave here, I ah, they never called me up. I ain't calling anybody up. I call. Did you used to hate that when you went to church? Whenever you went to church, uh, we missed you. <laughs> they didn't miss you. You know what they missed? Huh? They don't care. As long as you sent this in, you wouldn't get the call. See? Not, I never called you up saying, well, we do. We, you know, said, gee. I, the first thing I think of when you disappear, you know, when you're gone for a few weeks, and you may be, something might happen. Jeez, I wonder what I said. I, you know what I think? I, I wonder if they got mad because I said, hold communion with cannibalism. I couldn't have got him. Having sex with Jesus, maybe that got him. No, that wouldn't. What was it, you know, that caused people... But that's the way it goes. So Pisces comes to an end. The great net of Neptune is hauled from the sea, and every fish which is caught must come. But so many of them jump out. It said in Matthew 13, 48, when the net is filled, they gathered the good into the vessels, and the bad is cast away. Because so much of it is just, you know, not fit and not ready for this new age. That's what you've got to be. And how easy it is. Will you trust? Look. Look, put these books down for a minute. Put the Bible down for a minute. Will you please stop already? Close it for a minute. And listen for a minute. Huh? Jesus Christ, I'm not talking about me. If I told you to do this stuff, I would say you're pretty well founded not to do it. I'm saying Jesus Christ told you in Matthew 6, 22, practice the single eye. Did you ever see the dot in the middle of a forehead of a Hindu? That's it. He's saying, do that. Then do it. Jesus Christ said the kingdom of, 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 of God, the kingdom of heaven, is inside of you. He's the guy that said it. I didn't say it. He said, seek that first before you do anything. You don't need Bibles. You don't need New Age Journal. You don't need literature. You don't need records. You need to seek within yourself for the kingdom before, and everything else will come to you. Jesus Christ is the one that said, you take away the key of knowledge of understanding because you don't enter within yourself. And those that are entering in, you're hindering them because you're telling them they're all kinds of fakaktas and everything. Jesus Christ is the guy that said, Jesus Christ says, cast your net to the right side and you'll find. He said all of this stuff. Jesus Christ said, cast your neck to the right side and you'll find. John 6, 22. Jesus Christ says, the kingdom of God is within you. Luke 17, 21. Jesus Christ said, seek first that kingdom. Matthew 6, 33. Jesus Christ said, you take away the key of knowledge because you don't enter within yourself. Luke 11, 52. I said, Jack Van Impey, the man bomber. I said, I can rattle these things off like the guy in television. Huh? That's an inside joke for that. But what I'm simply telling you is that this is what Christ said to do. And what does it mean that you have to do? You have to sit down, close your eyes, enter within yourself, and allow that to happen. And what did they say in the Song of Songs last week? Do not wake the bridegroom until he's ready. Do not disturb him. People will tell you, this is how you meditate. It's not. If anybody tells you how to meditate, you can be absolutely sure it's wrong. Don't do it. You enter within yourself. Be quiet. Don't worry about the thoughts that come into your mind. Don't worry that you don't think. All you're supposed to do is sit in the chamber within and wait for him to waken. And he'll waken in due course. Reach and take your hand. You have to do nothing. The large upper room in Luke 22.10 is furnished. There is nothing to bring. You don't have to bring your new age tapes. You don't have to bring any of your, any of your smoke or powder or rocks or chains or anything like that. You don't have to bring earphones with you. All you have to do is sit down within yourself and wait for the bridegroom to wake up. And it'll happen. It'll happen. That's how simple it is. See, it doesn't require any, any prayers. So the picture of Aquarius is the Alpha and Omega. It's the beginning and it's the end of the Aquarian age. But in order for that picture to be, be poured out, it must be filled. 
And when it is filled, it must be poured out. Because, Albert, what it is, is the incoming and the outgoing tides. It's the, it's the turning on and the turning off. Even down, Albert told me one day, and I never forgot this, even down to the little atom. It's an opening and a closing, a turning on and a turning off. You know, this is the point. Some of us get in so much trouble because you go to church, and church is always trying to tell you that everything is going to be wonderful. And then you say, you got home, and you opened the door. Oh, what happened here? You know, the cat threw up, the dog went on the floor, the guy's got a note in your thing that they're going to turn the electric off, and the guy in the church said, everything is going to be wonderful, and everything is a horror. You know, it's not anything is good and anything is bad. It's all part of the same thing. See, Buddha used to tell this story, and, it, and, and I, you've heard versions of this story, but Buddha would say, Look, you have to understand that everything that is bad that has happened in your life has caused you to change direction, make an adjustment, fine-tune your life, and come up a lot better than you were before. See? And Buddha would say to this guy, he says, geez, you know, my horse ran away. The guy said, that's terrible. He says, no, it isn't. Because he went to the woods and he found about 18 other horses and brought them all home. So now I got 19. <laughs> The guy said, that's great. Buddha said, no, it isn't, because my son was trying to break one of those horses and fell off and broke his leg. The guy said, oh, my God, that's terrible. Buddha said, no, it isn't, because the army came around to recruit. They wouldn't take him because he had a broken leg. <laughs> and so everything then, you know, that looks like it's bad, there's a benefit that accrues to each one of us. For instance, we went on this vacation. We always go to Key West, and we fly in the plane. We get off from Jimmy Buffett singing, Wasting Away in Margarita. And if, you know what? The last couple of years, I started getting bored down here. I said, I'm bored with this. I want to go someplace else. This year, the pussycat was sick. We took the pussycat on vacation, and we drove to Florida. <laughs> Two weeks of clouds, pussycats, you know, doing what pussycats do in a room, yawn and all this stuff. It was the worst vacation any party ever created. But do you know what? It makes me long for margarita now. <laughs> I can't wait to get back to Key West, see? And it took something, and I'm very serious, like, it took something negative to, to re redirect your course so that you understand. So it's very, very, very important, because if there weren't those difficulties, we'd never know what good is. And so we have those. And of course, you have them in this age. Why, why Wait a minute, she's saying something. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think enough said it. Is it just, people are putting coats on. Have you got it too cold no, in here? No, Do I have it too cold? <laughs> Do I ever have it too cold? And they said, it's nice, you say, it's cold. That just goes to show you. It's, I'm not cold. I said, but why do I have to go through this? Because you're learning lessons. <laughs> Don't applaud that. <laughs> okay. Basically, this Pisces represents the prisoners that which is in bondage. The duality of the positive and the negative, the good and the bad. And, and, and the prisoners have broken free and are returning to become the children of Aquarius. That's what's going on right now. Do, 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 you, do you know what I'm telling you? I'm tell you have 12 months in the year, don't you? Each month is different, isn't it? It's, you live a little differently. You do different things in each month. I mean, they're all... They're, there's 12 zodiacal signs, the 12 months of the cosmos. They're 2,600 years each, and each one of them are different. And each people live differently. We've come through it all. You've come through the time of the shepherds of Aries, of, of the Jacobs and the Abrahams and all of that stuff. You came through the times before that of the Tories, of the struggling to, to, to understand and to fight and, and the expression of that which was the ego and, and the flesh. And you came through the times of the Pisces, the fishermen. Every place that Jesus went, they, they drew a picture of a fish. And now you're coming into the age of the spirit, Aquarius. And Jupiter is being replaced by Uranus, and Jupiter is the planet of wealth. And Uranus is the planet of spirit. And what you're seeing in the sky is Uranus, which is heaven or God, driving the money changers out of the temple. And if you look in your newspaper, you'll see banks going under all over the world, folding up like so many. And nobody understands. Nobody even questions. And this is what you've got to do, question why, why are all of these things happening? What's going on? And what is happening is the change in the universe. It is a change of a season of the soul, just as much as December is different than August, Uranus is different than Pisces. And Aquarius has spread a table for you, and now you can have it. It says in Psalm 23, Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You know who your enemies are? Your thoughts. The only enemy you have in this world are your thoughts. 
And in the presence of your enemy, a table is spread. And all you have to do is go to that upper room, that higher realm of consciousness, and those thoughts will start to minimize. And then you start to create, because when you start acting from the right hemisphere of the brain, it's not that you do things, you create things. And sometimes, you know, when I make a decision and I screw everything up, the spirit within me said, no, it wasn't a mistake. You just created something that didn't work. So learn from that. You know, you won't do that. Okay, I'll create something else. Let me try this and see if this works. It's not a mistake. It's not anything that you did wrong. It's just a creation that didn't work. So you prosper by that and you move off into another direction using that which is the creative part. Start thinking laterally instead of thinking vertically. Start energizing the right hemisphere of your brain. Each one of us is 90% ignorant. You use 10% of your brain. And that is what the Bible says is tithing. It has nothing to do with money. If anybody wants you to tithe, hang on to your wallet. You give God does not need money. God needs the left side, the 10%. You tithe that, and he'll give you the rest overflowing. And it doesn't require anything but you to stop and pause and sit down and then begin to energize yourself through meditation. Because the old order is collapsing. And this, in 19, I know in 1993, look, at all, look what you've seen in 1992. You wouldn't believe, if anybody, tell me, who would have, who, how many of you could have even visualized the fact that the Soviet Union, this was the big thing, well, it's gone. Think of this. We don't even, we don't even, we read the Bible to see these stories. Forget the Bible. Look at the television and look what's going on. Who would ever thought of such a thing? Who could ever imagine? How could it have happened? But that's nothing compared to what's going to happen here. Willie Clinton gets in there with a saxophone, watch what happens. <laughs> and I'm not saying that bad. I'm not saying the negative at all. I think it's probably, it's, it's a wonderful thing because it's all part of this energy which is flowing now in the new direction. So this is the starting of the new earth, a new heaven. And it says in Revelation 21.1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Don't you see? Pisces is gone. All of that is gone. All of that is gone. And standing alone is Aquarius. It's a new heaven. It's a holy new heaven. Pisces is gone. Aquarius is here. And there will be an era of peace, in spite of the fact of what you see. So many who are outside and are not into meditation are suffering from the shaking down of what's going on here, the negativity. Okay, we need, you want to come over here with me? We have a, a comment point here. Wait a minute, I got to get the... Uh, the uh, it's funny because... Can you, can you see him? You mentioned oh, it. Oh, come over here. That's okay. No, it, it isn't is okay. Something very short. Hear Just you. The foundation of Christianity was developed during the Dark Ages, as you've said before. Yeah. And, you know, with the age of Aquarius, uh, the, you know, the right, we were, you know, they were afraid to allow people to think for themselves or to use the right side of the brain because when, once you did that, you, you found individual freedom. And, but now it's going to, you know, mm -hmm. the age of Aquarius is going to bring forth that freedom for people and to allow people to think with the right side. I think a perfect example of that is our friend Galileo. He just had a scientific fact. He said, hey, fellas, I have what day it is. I got news for you. Hey, no, you got it screwed up. It's not the sun that's going around. It's the earth. The earth is not the center. The sun. And they said, hey, you are going against the Bible. See, the man was extremely creative. And so they put him in jail and, and wrecked his life and wrecked his career and destroyed everything. And then 400 years later, you know what they did? They wrote a letter of apology. Yeah. Now, and Mrs. Galileo wasn't even around. Who's going to take the letter of apology? <laughs> Well, you know what they said? This is what they said. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. And then you know what they said? Well, you know, we have to let bygones be bygones. After all, this was uh, uh, 400 years ago, and, and this is what the Pope said. This was 400 years ago, and in those days, people took the Bible literally. <laughs> That's what he said. See? And they still do. But the point is, it's so much more important than that, because if you looked at this last convention with the Republicans in Washington, and you saw so many of these strong evangelical fundamentalists sitting around there and talking, that was a threat. Because no longer does it become uh, maybe against public policy. No longer is it just a sin in their eyes. They would make laws against it, and you wouldn't, be able to, and you wouldn't even be able to do things like this. And that's exactly right, because they, they can't deal with people who think freely.
And that's why I say, don't join anything. Don't become a part of any group or organization. Break free of everything, any group or organization you're ever attached to. And go out and buy every book that they told you not to read and read it. And be a free-thinking individual. And then you'll be able to follow Christ. Only when you're broken out of the group, when you have no attachments to anything, then you'll be able to follow Christ. When he comes down to people, he says, you got a job, you're going to have to quit it. Now, I'm not you know, talking in that vein. I'm talking about your connection with that which is, which is the world, that which is organization. And you've got to break it and you've got to get away from it. Because the political and industrial giants are going to collapse. It's going to fall apart and you're going to see them collapse. And everything is going to return to a, to, to, to a smallness. And, and in the process, you'll start to discover your greatness. Do you know what they said on television? Do you know what they said on the radio, which I, said, which I showed Joan this morning? Do you know what they were talking about on the radio? News, NBC, CBS News, that they have found, and they're starting to rethink the cause of heart attacks. Not cholesterol, not drinking, not smoking. You know what it is? Trying to please the system. Trying to please the company you work for. Trying to please your boss. And people are getting so freaked out, and especially they're noticing this in Japan, they're having heart attacks left and right because they're so afraid that they may do the wrong thing which will cause them to get laid off or them to get fired or whatever. And they're finding that trying to survive in this corporate structure of the world today is a more important cause of heart attacks than drinking or smoking or eating cholesterol or whatever. Stress, exactly. And each one of you, you live five days a week trying to survive with the boss or, try, or waiting to see what they're going to say tomorrow or waiting to see, or if the phone rings, is that for you? And they want to, and all of this stuff goes on and it's a constant stress. Everybody putting coats on, you better turn the heat on. You did? Well, then everything. Oh, all right. Did you turn it up? Oh, okay. All right, let's, let's wrap this up, okay, as we talk about this. What, another thing that is going to be difficult for many, and you're going to see it more and more, and you're starting to see it, and it's not a question of whether you agree with it or not. You know, so people say to me, I don't know if I believe that. Well, it doesn't make any difference. If it's right, it's going to happen. And that is national boundaries are going to become irrelevant. And what you're starting to see in this new age, do you notice all of a sudden you're seeing this United Nations emphasis? The United Nations is going in here. The United Nations is going in there. It isn't a question of whether it's right or whether it's wrong or whether you agree or I agree. That's part of Aquarius. And that's part, you're going to see it stronger and stronger and stronger. It's not going to be children starving or people having problems saying, well, we can't enter there. That's not going to be a case anymore. That's another thing you're going to see happen. And that's part of the Jesus philosophy. I, uh, let, me, let me tell you something. If I follow Christ, I must drop my allegiances. I can't be tied to a political system anywhere in the world and follow Christ. I have got to put him 100% first and say, I will follow him and let all others go. And that's a very difficult thing to do. And you'll come, but you see, you'll come to church and you'll read Bibles and you'll sing the songs and you'll say, I'm a Catholic or I'm a Baptist or I'm a Methodist or I'm whatever or I'm whatever. But do you know something? Do you know one of the strongest Christian organizations in the United States is the Ku Klux Klan? Do you know that? It is. They just erected a cross in some town to, and they put on, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The Ku Klux Klan. See? Because anybody can justify anything. There's a song that we sing here, uh, Aaron Neville sings, that we, we won all of these wars. What do we say? We won it because God's on our side, with a gun in our hand and God on our side. But he says in the last verse of that song, the words fill my eyes and the tears hit the floor. If God's on our side, he'll stop the next war. You don't win any wars with God on your side because if you're saying you're winning wars with God on your side, don't forget you're killing people. And there may be a bad person at the beginning of it, but you're picking up a gun and you're shooting somebody in a trench and their mom is home praying that they're going to get home too and you never even met that person. The whole insanity of it. And just, for God's sakes, look and turn on the television and look at them today and see children and animals running to try to hide and little babies burned and, and full of blood. And, and even in Somalia with the little children starving to people running around with guns shooting at one another. And that's the way we've done things. But in Aquarius, we turn to a new source I'm going to show you something. If you'll just look at me, we'll wrap this up. There's a new source of food. 
There's a new source of understanding. There's a, a new elixir that we're going to consume. Go back to Exodus 16.35. I, I, I will tell you this, and I don't want to be the bearer of bad tidings, but there never was an exodus. There never was an exodus. There never was a 400,000. Can you imagine 400,000 people going across the desert? <laughs> and a guy chasing them in a chariot while the ocean opens. And he goes through it. And all of these stories are, are mythological stories. They're all allegorical stories because they're talking. Watch what happens. Here is you, OK? This is the part where all the activity is concerned. This is the left the left side of the brain. This is the part that is inhabited by all of your thoughts, all of your fears, all of your desires, all of your concerns. This is the virgin land. This, this here on the right side is the Garden of Eden. It's the promised land. I want to show you something. Go to Exodus chapter 16. All right. <clears throat> now go to verse 35. And the children of Israel, look at me. Come here with me a minute. Israel is not a country. In, in, in a part of the world. Israel is made of three Egyptian gods. Is, I, S, which is Isis, which is the spirit, the feminine principle. Ra, which is the mind, the masculine principle. And El, which is the, the bull cult, which is the God who dwells within you, the power within you. Israel is when you have your spirit and your mind in harmony. It will produce El, which is the power inside of you. That's why an angel is E-L. There is no such thing. Angel means an electrical prompting within you, which is the communication of God. That's why all the angels' names are Raphael, Gabriel, Michael, Uriel, because it's of the Bolith Mithrakal. So the children of Israel is the offsprings of those who have the spirit and the mind together to produce that which is the force of what we call God within us. Okay, Chapter 16, verse 35 of Exodus. And the children of Israel did eat manna, that is food from heaven, understanding. If you go into the pyramids of Egypt and you go into the queen's chamber, then you go to the king's chamber. In the box in the king's chamber is contained what is called manas. It is wisdom. It is understanding. There was no bread that fell out of any sky. This is talking about when you have your mind and your spirit together, you get food from heaven. You get instruction from the higher mind. That is manna. So the children of Israel, or those who are the offspring of the higher mind, received that which was instruction from the higher realms of consciousness. Okay, And look what it said. For 40 years, that word 40, the root of that word for symbolizes the fourfold nature of man, which is physical, intellectual, spiritual, and emotional. So when you have yourself together and God within you, you are tuned into the higher realms of consciousness. Then you eat or you digest that which is instruction from the right hemisphere of the brain, which steers you through life to the fourfold nature of man. When did it stop? They ate that manna from heaven until they came to a land inhabited. Do you see that? Until they came to a land inhabited. Until you start taking from the lower mind, you'll eat and your restruction will come from the higher mind. It's not that the troubles of life will stop coming against you. It's you'll know how to deal with them. You'll know how to deal with them. You're not going to freak because you have your mind, you have, you have your spirit, you have your mind together producing that which is the God consciousness, which sends down the instruction from the higher levels, which is the right hemisphere of the brain, and that will work for you until you turn to a land that is inhabited, and it's inhabited by all your thoughts, which is the left hemisphere of the brain, the carnal mind. Has nothing to do with people going across the country. They're saying Pharaoh. You remember Pharaoh was supposed to have gone under the Red Sea and he got killed. Pharaoh is in a tomb in Egypt. He never went under no Red Sea. The reason the Red Sea is because the word red in mysticism means the emotions, and the sea is churning. When your emotions are churning and you don't know what to do, and you get like me and you're screaming and you're pulling and you're going to this and what is going to happen? I know this is okay, but what if this happens and all of this stuff happens? And it's saying you get like. Moses, you look up, you go up into the higher realms of meditation, and then what happens? The sea of the churning emotions parts, and you walk across to the right hemisphere of the promised land. That's what it was meant to be. But do you know there are people today who will go out and spend great sums of money looking to see if they can find a shallow place in the Red Sea where you can walk across? Absolutely amazing. 
because they've never ever stopped. Hey, come on. I mean, you, here's a guy that wrote a book. He wrote all this book. All of these things, all of these words that are spoken. And he says, this is what they mean. Oh, how does he know what they mean? How do you know shoot the bull doesn't mean actually kill an animal? How do you know if I say to you, hey, Vinny, let's go shoot the bull? Maybe I'm saying, let's go get a gun. There must be a bull somewhere in Forked River. Let's go find him and shoot him. See? And so we laugh at this stuff. Oh, hey, did you know this poor girl shot her mouth off? Call the first aid. <laughs> Elliot, get the phone. Call the first aid. There's blood all over the wall. She shot her mouth off. And I've said that Ethel's off the wall. <laughs> always said Ethel's off the wall. As far as you, Jones Schultz, you're always spilling the beans. <laughs> Look at all over the floor. Beans, all kinds of beans, refried beans, green beans, peas, carrots, everything. It's stupid, isn't it? Because not one thing that you say means what you say. It all means something else because you speak in a symbolic language. And you know what? If you sit down and list them, you can think of millions of them. It's off the wall. He's green with envy. Did you ever hear him say, oh, well, you know, you can't expect too much of him. You know, he's a young player. Like Mike's a football player. See the guy sitting there picking his nose in the fourth row? He's a <laughs> I just thought I could identify you, you know? <laughs> well, he's a football player. But, you know, he's, I'm sure he's heard many times that people say, well, he's just a green kid. <coughs> well, is he a vegetable? <laughs> but don't you understand? It's all symbolism. <coughs> look, look. So, somebody tell me what page Galatians 4.24 is on. And I gotta hurry. Gal hurry up, because I just want everybody to see something. What page is it on? Hurry up. Galatians, chapter 4, you have to be a little louder than that, 953, are you with me in 953, Galatians chapter 4, here's the Apostle Paul speaking of the Old Testament, you know what I've just been telling you, allegory, symbolisms, Galatians 4, here's, here's, here's the Apostle Paul talking about Abraham and Sarah, you know when she's 114 and she gets pregnant, can you figure this one out, anyhow, but here it is, <laughs> Galatians, Chapter 4, go to verse 23. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. He of the free woman was by a promise. Look at verse 24. Which things are an allegory. It's not real. It's a symbolic story. Okay? So now we are free from the dungeons of the bottom of that which is Pisces. And there's a new fisherman. I gotta show you this because you're gonna kick out. I gotta have you see this. Don't give me enough time. Do you know who the new fisherman is? Do you know who the fisherman was of a question? Do you know who the fisherman is? Did you ever see the picture in mythology? He stood in the water up to his half man and half fish. He had the head of a fish. You know what his name is? E. Ah, the fish god. But you know what's interesting is he stood in the water of the fish god? When you translate his name into Greek, And when you translate his name into English, John the Baptist, the fish man. John the Baptist, standing in the water, is the fish man, Ea, of Aquarius. Now, does it begin? Begin to make sense why Jesus submitted? Why did Jesus go down and submit? There's nothing in the Old Testament about baptism. So why did he submit? He was submitted to the fish man, the fish god of Aquarius. Yeah, John. And that's why he said, when you see the man with the pitcher of water, enter into the house, go to the upper room. A new mankind is born from the fish of Aquarius. The surrender must come from each one of you. And now we attend, as they said in that record, the dawning of the age of Aquarius, the gate of eternity. And the Apostle Paul said, this is how you do it. You become new be by being transformed by the renewing of your mind. So uh, Aquarius now swings majestically. And Albert, you know, as he shows these things on his computer, it's all, it's all happening. See? And so, just, you know the amazing thing, Albert, people say, well, I don't believe in that stuff. And there it is. You know? It's like, it's like it's, I say so many times, you know, you drive your car. But how could you drive your car if your religion didn't believe in steering wheels? <laughs> Oh, we don't believe me. We don't going to hear that stuff. I'm getting out of here. Put it in gear, but don't touch the steering wheel. It's exactly what you do. 
not allowed to believe in it. But it's happening. It is really happening in the universe today. And the Bible is filled with it. So you've got to walk upon the waters of mortality and look to the Christ. And it says in Isaiah 30, verse 21, And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way. And Jesus Christ said in Matthew 7, Knock and the door shall be open. And in the silence of meditation you must be still. Look into the depths of your soul. That's all I can say. I'm wrapping this up. This is a two-part thing. We're wrapping it up the age of a curse. Look into the depths of your soul. Read the paper. And every time you see something, say, I wonder if this has anything to do with it. Think about it. The sun that is now at the gate of Aquarius. So the soul can become one with the light of the world. Become one with your true self. And do you know what the prayer of Aquarius is? Thy will be done. You want to go back into Hindu and find a word that means thy will be done? Here it is. Oh, do you know that's what it means? Thy will be done. Oh, that's what you got to do. Then you fly into the arms with the man with the pitcher of water and be one with the new Aquarian age of the universe. It's like anything else. Hey. You're on a plane. Sometimes, I remember one time we flew, Rose, Joe, we, we flew in a plane from uh, Key West to uh, Miami. And, and, the, and, 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 and we had never been on this plane before, and the, and the pilot was breaking in a co-pilot. <laughs> and I was nervous, because you could hear everything they were saying, because you're only sitting a couple of feet from them. And all of a sudden, as we're out over the water at about 2,000 feet or whatever it was, the pilot yelled at the co-pilot, don't touch that! <laughs> and I looked at the door with the handle on it. You know? And then you start to feel and everything is wet. Instantly wet happens. I mean, you didn't have to say, I feel wet. It was just wet. Don't ever touch that. And I, and I sat in this wet looking at the doorknob. And I said, I want to get out. I don't want to be here anymore. But I couldn't get out. Lost in there. And I asked you to add some figures up for me. Yeah. Oh, that was last year. No, that was the year we were in the little thing. Was it? Mm -hmm. And the plane was going through the... See, this, when we were on vacation, we had the flat tire. We were stuck at 95, two miles from Baltimore. Trucks are coming. State troopers are coming. Big things are coming, whizzing by. The tire's flat. The cat's in the back seat, sleeping in the thing. Under. We got everything piled in the car. And she's sitting there reading about King Charles and Fergie. <laughs> Oh, do you know that Fergie was running around with uh, King Charles' brother? I said, how could you be doing this? This is serious. Well, the darkness is coming. Oh, you have to be in the moment? She said, you have to be in the moment. So when we were in the plane, we're in a plane. You go through the clouds, and the plane is going down and going up. And you never know. Let's face it. Sometimes if it's going down, maybe it won't come back up. You know, you don't know. In that brief instant, it could go down, all right? So she, you know what she said? She's in the plane's going down. She's got her calculator out. And she's saying, uh, Billy, I want you to add some figures up. I said, do you realize this, I could be dead? This is life or death? Stop it. But this is the way she is, you know. This is, this is why I, somebody in here has to be crazy. And so, you know, this is why I have to be the way I am. Because I have to do this, I have to do this for two people. You know. And so, what is my salvation? My salvation is coming in here and on a Tuesday night home and entering into nirvana and flying up into Aquarius. And thank God Uranus is coming to straighten all of this out. What do you think? What's your name? Elizabeth. Come here, Elizabeth. Here. All I want you to do is say, my name is Elizabeth, but don't say it yet. And uh, this show is over, okay? My name is Elizabeth, and this show is over, okay? <laughs> Gotta come with me, Elizabeth. Right. Right. My name is Elizabeth, and this show is over. My name is Elizabeth, and this show is over. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>